Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be multiplied unto you today. Welcome in Jesus' name to our service. Thank you for coming today. So great to see all of you here. Uh, I was thinking about, um, as I was preparing for this Sunday, thinking about the last time that we met. Now, you know, here in Tamiami, we don't meet all summer. So the last time we met was the last week of May. Uh, the other church that I served, uh, Windmill Village, uh, they meet all summer long. But it's been 19 weeks since we've had church here. So that's like over a third of the year. So I, was just, I wrote down some notes here about a few things that have happened since the last time we met. Now, obviously, some of you were here, but many, many, many of you might have already gone north for the summer. But uh, not, since 19 weeks ago, we've had three storms, or actually two storms, with a third storm coming through. We had Tropical Storm Debbie come through here. Was anybody, who was here for Tropical Storm Debbie? You were, Larry? And the Joneses? Okay. And Dan was here, too. And then we had Hurricane Helene come through. How many were here for that? Okay. And now we're having this tropical storm slash hurricane. It's called Milton. Is that what it's called now? Yeah. And we're all going, oh, I don't know what's going to happen, do we? Uh, they said BJ's had a line a mile long when they drove by. Uh, for a gasoline, you mean? Oh, for a gas. Okay. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, we, we saw a picture. Um, it was a picture of the United States at night and shows where lights are and where lights aren't. And the path of Hurricane uh, Helene, that whole path on the, where it go, went through the part of Florida, then into Georgia and North Carolina, all of that is black. They have no electricity in many, many places. So we've had a horrible time, especially this last hurricane, uh, affecting so many people in the United States. Then, in regards to politically speaking, we've had uh, two attempts on the life of one presidential candidate. And then we had the, basically the replacement of one presidential candidate with another candidate. Now, whatever your persuasion is, you know it's been kind of a upheaval in regards to political things in the United States. It's less than uh, five weeks away we'll be uh, actually voting for president. And then you can vote early, too, in that case. So lots of things have happened. I, I think, uh, listening to the news, this has been one of the rainiest summers in years down in Florida. What did you say, Angie? You're telling me. You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> if you know Angie and Larry do uh, lawn work. Has it been kind of rainy, Larry? Over 50 inches of rain, yeah. So it's been... And 50 inches of grass. And 50 <laughs> inches of grass. <laughs> That's probably right, Dan. That's probably right. So quite a few things. And then that's just kind of like over, overriding. And if I were to ask you all individually what has happened to you in the last 19 weeks, certainly there are things that have happened to you, whether there's been, you know, uh, family situations, or there's been the death of a loved one, or there's been other uh, illnesses that have taken place. Maybe you faced other issues too with your children or your grandchildren, whatever it is. But as we come together today, uh, we're going to recognize this. My, my sermon today is entitled Poetic Words by Moses. We're going to see how God kind of speaks to us in regards to when life is going on and the God who is there for us. And so we come together now for the first time in these 19 weeks. We come together to meet the God who has been forever the same. Amen. And we're thankful that we have a God like that. Amen. And so even though life has changed, even though we've gone through these many different things, we have a God who hasn't changed. And we rejoice in him today. And we're thankful today for the privilege, not only of coming to him, but having an access to him through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we come to worship him together today. All right, just a few announcements, if we would. Did you guys all get a bulletin this morning? Did everybody get a bulletin? All right, I, I wrote, welcome back. Uh, I hope you had a great summer. And uh, I wrote, we're glad to see each of you here today and reconnect with you. We're looking forward to a great season of worship and fellowship with God and with one another. We'll meet together, Lord willing, unless there's some kind of a break with a hurricane or something. We'll meet together from now until the end of May. And I know some of you will be here 
just about every Sunday. Uh, and we'll have a few other people join us along the way, right? Yeah. All right. Um, Larry Hagerman tapes our services every week, including today, and that is available to you. If you went on YouTube and looked up Larry Hagerman's name, you would find it, usually later afternoon, right, Larry? Yeah, 3 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, if, and then if some people, I actually have emails to some people, and I actually send out an email that has a link to Larry's uh, YouTube for our service. So if you want to watch the service again online, if you want to see if your the back of your head is showing or anything like that, you can watch it again. I have this funny thing that happened all last summer or this summer. There's there's a couple, they're not really a couple, they're friends, uh, and the the man stayed in town here. The woman moved back up to Michigan. She moved up to Cadillac, Michigan. You guys any gonna where Cadillac is? Anyway, she moved up to Cadillac Mission and she started watching the videos. So she watches every week. Now she's probably gonna see this one too because she'll watch it. And the funny thing is her friend, uh, she can see him on the video. She was watching to make sure he would come to church every Sunday. So he couldn't miss church. Now he can do it because we're not videotaping over there. But he couldn't miss church otherwise she'd be saying, hey, where's my bud, you know? And that, that's... So you can keep track of people by watching the video too. All right, the second thing I want to say here is so many have been affected by Hurricane Helene and people ask the question, what can I do? What can I do? And uh, so we have chosen as a church to take a special offering uh, through Samaritan's Purse. Are you guys familiar with Samaritan's Purse? Samaritan's Purse is the executive director is a man named uh, Franklin Graham. He's the son of Billy Graham. And they do ministry to places where there's need for help. They go into these emergency places and begin just cleaning up and doing whatever needs to be done. And so they're, they're one of the uh, frontline ministries that do that. We as a church actually are involved in something else they do. We do something called Operation Christmas Child later in this fall, and that's where we do those shoe boxes and put those together and the shoe boxes are sent to children around the world. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. And so that's an opportunity for us to do that too. That's later on. This specifically is for Hurricane Helene. And so if you would like to give, um, the church is going to give uh, an offering too, but if you'd like to give individually and like to give that through our church, uh, you can put a check in or however you want to designate that and just designate it as uh, Samaritan's Purse. And Larry's going to keep track of that, and then we'll send a check to them. So we're going to do that for the next several weeks. And if you'd like to give online, the actual website is there. That's not a link, but it's actually the website there. Okay? Any other announcements today as we begin? No? This is the first Sunday of the month of October, and so that means we are also going to be involved in communion, and that will be later on in the service. And so, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ and are able to examine yourself, you are invited to the table this morning. Let's turn our hearts to the Lord then, if we would. If you want to look at our uh, order of service, we'll see here uh, our call to worship. Our, more, our opening scripture is taken from Psalm 34, where the writer says this. It's David, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let's pray together, can we? Father in heaven, we come before you in Jesus' name and we're thankful for the privilege of being here. Thank you for each person that has come to worship you. And we rejoice in you today, O oh God. We're thankful for the access we have through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray that you might be exalted, might be adored, might be worshipped and praised as we meet together. As we sing songs of praise, as we hear what your word has to say to us, as we read the scriptures together, and then as we enter into the Lord's table together, I pray that this might be a time when we truly worship you in spirit and in truth. And I pray at the same time that you, by your Holy Spirit, would come down and touch our lives, remind us again of who you are, uh, and encourage us in our hearts and in our walk with you. And may we go from here, Lord, having encountered the Almighty and 
strengthened again by his power to work and live for you. Bless this time together then. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, let's, let's turn together to number 411. If you have a hymnal, the song is entitled Break Thou the Bread of Life. And we're going to stand together and sing the verses of this song. Would you greet two or three other people with the peace of God before you're seated today? of reading together. It's page uh, 610. And it's number 630. It is Psalm 42. We're going to read it together. I'll read the bold print and you can respond together in the fine print. Psalm 42. A heart, by the way, is like a deer, okay? As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so my, soul after thee, God. my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. My tears have been my meat day and night. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. 
Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. Why art thou downcast, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall be at reason. Praise the Lord. There's a psalmist that asks a question about himself. He's basically talking to himself. Why are you downcast? And then he encourages himself to say, hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. God bless the reading of his word. All right. So we're going to turn to the scripture. It's actually to another psalm. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. And if you don't have your Bibles, you probably can find Psalm 90 in the back of the hymnal, too. But we're going to turn to Psalm 90. And if you have... Uh, if you have something to write with, that's cool, because I need you to write at least one thing down. And I have an outline on the back of my bulletin. Uh, so if you want to follow along with me, you can do that. Psalm 90. Now, if you'll note here, um, sometimes the scriptures, specifically the Psalms, have something like a superscript over it. It tells us, who the writer was, and sometimes it even gives the occasion why he is writing. In this one, it doesn't actually tell us when. We have kind of like to surmise that. But we do know who. Did anybody have a Bible and know who it is? This is the, who wrote this one? Moses. Moses. Now, what do we know about Moses? Did Moses write anything else? Let's see, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are all written by, what's that? Is that what it says? Well, um, actually, oh, actually, I don't think, I, this is the only one attributed to him. Psalm 90 to 106 is book four in the book of the Psalms. But specifically here, we know that Moses wrote this particular psalm. In fact, the, my superscript says this, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Wouldn't you like to be called a man or a woman of God? That'd be a pretty good title, wouldn't it be? You simply are a person who follows after God. Well, let's see what Moses has to say here, okay? So let's read it, Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are, as yet, are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. You, uh, they are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. Sorry. Um, the days of our life are 70 years, and if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and, and have compassion on your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy, that they may rejoice and be glad all the day, all our days. Make us 
glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us and the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Let's pray together, can we? Father, we thank you today for the privilege of prayer. And we thank you for this prayer of Moses as he reflects on his life. We pray, Lord God, that you, you might just show us once again more of yourself here and more of who we are. And Lord, help us to recognize the brevity of life and the joy we have of a God who is eternal. Bless this time together now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Recently, I reconnected with one of my childhood friends. His name is Jeff Cole. I was looking at this sign. I was on Facebook, and all of a sudden, I saw this post by a guy named Jeff Cole. And so I texted him or messaged him. I said, are you the Jeff Cole from Eugene, Oregon? It was. Our lives have been so different, but he was one of my best friends growing up. And I remember one time I actually was able, my parents let me sleep over at his house one night, and we were sitting in his bedroom talking, and he asked me this question. I get that there's a God, he said, but I have a question. Who made God? Who made God? You ever had someone ask you that question before? Usually it's a six-year-old when you go, how do I answer that question? <laughs> Jeff was a little older than six, but you know what I'm saying? Who made God. And as we look at the passage of scripture today, I would ask this question. God answers this question in Moses' words. So look with me, and I'm talking about poetic words. There are different places in those five books of the Pentateuch that Moses kind of had like a, a poem. Um, Exodus chapter 15, after the children of Israel are uh, carried through the Red Sea on dry land. Remember, they went through the Red Sea, and then they get to the other side, and Pharaoh and his army come after them. And God causes the water to go flow over the Egyptians, and they all drown. And Psalm, uh, rather, uh, Exodus 15, verse 1 says, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider fell into the sea. That was like another prayer of Moses, another poetic thing he said. Well, look, let's see what he says today. What poetic things does Moses have to say to us today? Well, number one of my outline says this. First are words about the character of God. And what does he tell us? He tells us that our God is eternal. Eternal. Listen to what it says in verses 1 and 2. Bef uh, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Now, okay, it's hard for us to think about different dimensions. We live in a three-dimensional world, don't we? Uh, I think when I was a kid, there was a group called the fifth dimension. You remember the fifth dimension? I don't know what the fifth dimension would be, but God is beyond any other dimension that we have. We live in a finite world. I, I was born in 1959, and maybe I'll live to 2059. I'm not sure how long it'll be. But all of you were born one day, and, and we're going to die one day. But God lives beyond the realm of our humanity, beyond the realm of our finiteness. Before the, the, the psalm, or rather, Moses says this, before the mountains were brought forth or ever you formed the earth and the world. Way before you were God. And you're God now. And you will be forever. So I'm answering my friend Jeff's question, who made God? You know what the answer is? Nobody. He's the uncaused cause. God has always been and will always be. And so the psalmist, or rather Moses says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Now listen to what it says in verse 4. For a thousand years 
in your sight, how long are they to God? Are like yesterday when it is gone. A thousand years in your sight are like, uh, are like yesterday when it is past. Now it's interesting when you go to the book of Peter, I think it's second Peter, Peter says this, for as in, with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day, right? You heard the guy that was asking God for money. Lord, Lord, please send me money. Lord, you know I need money. Lord, can you send me money? And the Lord says, tomorrow, tomorrow, right? <laughs> Meaning a thousand years from now, right? It's a thousand years is as one day and one day is a thousand years. But Moses reflects and Peter reflects the words of Moses. He must have maybe even re referenced Moses' statement here that a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past. So we think there have been tumultuous things happen. Even I mentioned about the last 19 weeks. 19 weeks is like that with God, isn't it? So what we see is we see our God is eternal. The second thing I want to say, this is another B in my outline, is this, that God is our dwelling place. That's the way Moses started this thing. He says in verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Now think about the situation Moses is in. I'm going to mention a little bit more later about that, but where was Moses when he wrote this? He was probably in the wilderness with the children of Israel. This was like two to three million people that are traveling. They've been released and delivered from their slavery in Egypt, and now they're on their way to the promised land. And what do they live in? <laughs> they certainly don't have houses like you and I have, not even a mobile home. It was mobile, all right, but it wasn't a home. It was a tent. That's all they lived in. And they went from place to place. And if you remember, the way they moved was when the Shekinah glory of God moved, that's when they left. And when the Shekinah glory stopped, that's where they set up camp again. But wherever they lived, whether it was in a tent, wherever it was, God was always there. And more than a place for them to stay, God was the one who was, the, was there for them. In fact, the word dwelling place can be described as a refuge. You know what a refuge is? Certainly we think about people that have gone through this hurricane. A lot of them are seeking a refuge. Their houses might have floated away down the river. They're looking for a place of comfort and security and sanctuary from all around them. And when we face our life, we face all kinds of difficulty, not only just the physical difficulties of life, but every kind of difficulty. And to whom do we go when we are in the midst of difficulty? We go to the God who is a refuge. And Moses, is, he said, you've been our dwelling place in all generations. I mean, go back all the way back. All the way back to the book of Genesis when, when you have Abraham and Isaac and Jacob they lived in tents, the scripture says in, in uh, Hebrews. They lived in tents, but God was their dwelling place. And even farther back than that, the very first people uh, in the world were Adam and Eve. And even for Adam and Eve, God was their dwelling place. Now, I would ask this question. If you were to think about the world today. There is, what, how many? Eight billion people on the earth today? Is that what they've told us? Is that right? Eight billion people. Of the eight billion people, how many do you think are actually true believers in the true God? You think it's all eight billion people? There are a few that are kind of like stragglers, uh, unbelievers, and kind of like disinterested in God, don't you think? In the very beginning, there were only two people on the earth, and they were created by the Almighty, the eternal, eternal God. And to them, God was their dwelling place. And for every generation after that until now, God has been 
the dwelling place of his people. What happened to the earth? <coughs> Why isn't everybody a believer in Jesus Christ? Because we've chosen our own way, haven't we? And yet, the, for those who have believed, just as Moses speaks here, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Well, that's a picture of our God, a God who is eternal, uh, a God who is our dwelling place. The second thing that Moses has to say is he has words to say about the character of man. And um, let's see what he has to say here. He says in verse 4, For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. And then he starts talking about man in verse 5. Listen to what he says. He says, you carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. What's the comparison here? What's the contrast between a God who is eternal and humanity? Did you catch it, what he said? Now, I wrote in my outline this, that life is fleeting. Life is fleeting. In fact, there are several things that Moses uses here to describe mankind. He says uh, in verse 5, they are like a sleep. And actually, another translation says they're like a dream. How long does a dream last? Only for as long as you're sleeping. And maybe not even the whole time while you're sleeping. When you wake up, it's gone, isn't it? And then he says, so I said, it's like a dream. Number two, he says, um, they, verse, you carry them away like a flood. If you watched any videos in this last week of what happened in western North Carolina, that's what they had, didn't they? They had a torrent of flood, of flood waters come through. But do you think the flood waters are still there? As bad as they did, the amount of damage they did in North Carolina, the floodwaters are pretty much gone, aren't they? And even when we, and if we have a flood again this coming week, from, the flood won't be here forever, will it? It will come, and then it will go. I think they even called it, in North Carolina, they called it a flash flood, which means it comes like that, and it's gone just as, as quickly, isn't it? Well, the Lord describes our life, he says in verse 5, you carry them away like a flood. What else does he use? Uh, this is number three in my outline. He calls us grass. Listen to what he says about the grass. You can get this one out, right, Angie? Here's what it says. In the, it says, in the morning they are like grass which grows up. Does grass grow in the summertime, Larry? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. How long does it last? A day. Going on, verse, uh, in verse 9, it says this. All our days are past in your wrath. They, we finish our years like a sigh. You know what a sigh is? It's about that long. And then he says, and I put this as number five, he puts it as a number. And no offense to any of you here, but these are the numbers that Moses spoke. Listen to what he says. Uh, this is in verse 10. The days of our lives, that's not the old uh, you know, soap opera. This is the days of our lives. The days of our lives are how many years? 70 years. And then he says, and if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Now, again, Moses is older than that probably than when he's writing this. But he's talking about what, how God gives us life. He says the days of our life are like, I didn't write those down. There's a nice line there. You can write this down. We live from between 70 and 80. Now, just as kind of a note here. How many of you guys here are more than 80 years old? Women, you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, all right? But you can. Okay, so we have a few people that have outlived that, haven't we? 
But the Lord says here through Moses, listen to what he says. The day, verse 10, the days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet what? Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. It is soon cut off, and we fly away. I remember when I was a teenager. You know what the attitude is when you're a teenager? Life is going to last forever, isn't it? I'm indestructible. You know, you see these teenagers who drive their car at an exorbitant amount of speed, thinking nothing can happen to me, or they do something stupid physically and hurt themselves because they think they're indestructible. No offense to young people. But we have that attitude sometimes, that, some, that life is going to go on forever, don't we? But the reality is, our life is a finite life. All these things tell us that our life is fleeting, for soon it is cut off and we fly away. What's the difference between us and God? Well, we live this 80-year period of, of life on this earth, and all that time God is forever the same, from everlasting to everlasting, isn't he? The contrast is, is immense. All right, so go on to my outline. Number, letter B and number two is this, that God knows our deeds are good and bad deeds. Look what it says in verse 11. For who knows the power of your anger? As for the fear of you, so is your wrath. So, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. See, verse 9 said, For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. I, I, I'm thinking of, we don't know exactly when Moses actually wrote this, but at least one Bible scholar said it probably happened while they were in the wilderness and probably around the time of uh, the book of Numbers chapter 20. If you read Numbers chapter 20, you don't have to turn there now, but in Numbers chapter 20, three things happened to Moses. Okay, the first thing was, if you note, Moses was the third born of his family. He had an older sister and he had an older brother. His older sister's name was Miriam. And, and Miriam, in, during this time, Miriam and uh, actually Aaron kind of challenged his authority. Miriam died in Numbers chapter 20. And then later on in chapter 20, the children of Israel rise up against Moses and they said, we don't have any water. What did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Can you hear their complaints? And this wasn't the first time they'd complained about water. Earlier they had complained about water way back. And Moses, if you know the story, he threw, a, he threw a tree into the water and the bitter water became sweet. And then they complained another time again. And God said, Moses, I want you to strike the rock. And when you strike the rock, water will come out of the rock. And now here they're, I'm not sure if they've come exactly to the same place, but it's in a place called Massa and Meribah, which are places of contempt. And here they're doing it again. They're complaining about water again. And Moses is kind of ticked. You know how you can get sometimes when people are against you? And God says to Moses, I hear their complaint. Moses, go and speak to the rock and the water will come out. And so Moses gets up and he's kind of like, he has a little bit of an attitude. And he's talking to the people, you rebellious people. You know what he does? He doesn't speak to the rock. You know what he does? He strikes the rock. In fact, he strikes the rock two times. And the water does come out, but something happens to Moses. And if you know the story, God says, Moses, you're not going to go into the promised land because you didn't do what I asked you to do. And Aaron had done it with him. So the third thing that happened to Moses, he lost his sister Miriam. And then he lost his right into the promised land because of his disobedience. And then the Lord said, and now Aaron's not going to go into the promised land either. You take him up to this mountain and take his son with him. And you strip him of all his clothes of being a priest. And you put those clothes on his, his son. And Aaron's going to die. And Aaron died on the mountain. 
So imagine how traumatic it was for Moses. Moses had seen what his sister had done. His sister had died. And then he knew his own sin because he had done the wrong thing and striking the rock twice when God told him to speak to the rock. And now he had to watch as his brother died. Certainly in his own life he's thinking, God has judged me. Listen to what he says in verse 9 again. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We finish our years like a sigh. The days, uh, and then he says in verse 11, Who knows the power of your anger? For as the fear of you, so is your wrath. He knew God. And he knew God knew him. I wrote in my outline this, that God knows our deeds, both good and bad. And Moses is reflecting on his life with God. He recognizes that God was his, his dwelling place through all generations, but he recognizes that sometimes God judges him. So number three in my outline. Our time okay? We're doing okay. All right. So listen to what it says here. Four things that Moses says, and we could talk a lot about all these, but let me just touch on these really quickly. He says that in verse 12, so teach us, to number our days. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. If our life is only 80 years, it's going to pass away pretty quickly. What does God want us to do? And I would say, without a doubt, except the young people in this front row, without a doubt, most of us have spent more days than we have left. What does God want us to do? And I'm speaking to you young people too. God wants us to teach us to number our days that we may present a heart of wisdom. God wants us to recognize the hours we have and use them to his glory and do it whatever we can to serve God and love him. Number two, verse 14 says this, O oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. What is he asking for? Oh, satisfy us early, like in the morning, with your mercy. Now, the translation, this is New King James. It can also be, that word mercy can be translated loving kindness. It is the word hesed in Greek, or in Hebrew, rather. Hesed, hesed is like the overwhelming mercy and love of God demonstrated to his people. The love of God given to us not because we deserve it, but because God is gracious and compassionate. The word hesed in Hebrew really in the New Testament is shown in the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in a few minutes, we're going to go to the Lord's table. It is a reminder to us of all that Jesus Christ has done for us. It is a reminder to us that God has given us salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, and that by believing in him, we are his and he is ours. Paul wrote it this way, God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John said it this way, in this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And Moses is asking God, oh, satisfy us early with your hesed, your mercy and love. In order, he says, uh, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Yes, we have a God who knows our good and bad things, but we have a God who has loved us even in spite of who we are. And God's love reminds us that we can rejoice and be glad in him. Two other things. Verse 17. <clears throat> And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Let the beauty of our Lord. Another translation says, let the favor of our Lord be upon us. When I was younger, we used to sing this chorus. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and purity. There's something to be said that God bestows of his favor 
and his beauty upon us. That even though in ourselves we're not that beautiful, and I'm not talking about physical beauty here. I'm talking about spiritual beauty. That Moses is asking that God's beauty be bestowed on his people. Can you just see it? The glow of God, the glory of God, and the beauty of God being transcended in our life. That we look more and more like Jesus. Moses said, let the beauty of our Lord be upon us. And then the last thing is this, number, letter D, and that is this. And establish the work of our hands for us. And he repeats it. Yes, establish the work of our hands. That God has something for us to do. God had something for Moses to do. His life wasn't over, at least not yet. He was still leading the children of Israel. And God has something for all of us to do, no matter what age we are. Even if we're past that 70 or 80 years, God still has something for us to do, doesn't he? And we would ask that God in his mercy and in his love and grace would establish for us the work of our hands. That we would use the rest of our days to honor and to serve Read the conclusion with me, would you? It's at the end of the outline. Our eternal God has been and is our dwelling place. Let us find refuge in him, interact with him, and spend each day in his presence doing those things he calls us to do. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to turn now to our communion. Um, portion of the message, a portion of the service. And so it says here, uh, moments of self-examination. The scripture says in Psalm, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that a man or woman should examine themselves before they partake of the bread and drink of the cup. So let's just spend a few moments before the Lord in silent meditation. Let's pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's recite also uh, our statement of faith as it is expressed in the Apostles' Creed. If you don't know the Apostles' Creed, it's in the book, hymnal number 666. Let's say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, when he had supped, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a communion in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a communion in the body of Christ? Since there is one bread, we who are many are one body, 
for we all partake of the one bread. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus said, this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. Let's have a moment of silent prayer before the Lord. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who now has bestowed upon you his holy body and blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen you in true faith unto everlasting life. Amen. Is there anyone like to give a testimony this morning? Bob, you want to give your testimony? Go for it. Yeah, come on up. Here's a microphone and everything. Here's what happened. I live out on a farm, and I have got about three rows of trees, pine trees, across the west and three across the, the north. And last year, I had several of them go down. Big, tall trees, and I had a lot of limbs. They kept piling up and piling up. So I come down here for the winter. When I go back, I take my tractor, and I pushed all these, tr tree these limbs out in the field to burn. And I thought I had them away from far enough away because it, it, uh, I had to burn these things because they were going to put my crops in. I've got 18 acres, and, they, and it, it's farmed. So... I, I pushed them out in, in the field, and I thought they was far away enough. And all, this, all the wind picked up, and all oh, no. the things kept coming toward these other trees. And it was, I, I was getting scared. I said, if this happens, I'm going to be in deep trouble because it'll go so far, burn all these trees, and catch, catch my barn on fire. And that's pretty close to the house. So uh, I didn't know what to do. I was shaking, you know. I, was, I didn't know, take my tractor and push them again, but it was the fire that I had already lit, and the fire was really coming up. So I asked the, I asked the Lord, <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm in deep trouble here. I said, uh, I need you to come. I've read, uh, read about all the th miracles that you performed, doing this and doing that. I'm asking you, Lord. I, I, I was had tears in my eyes. I thought my other things were going to catch on fire, but they didn't. And you know, all of a sudden, it just felt like God was right here. And the wind, I asked him to take the wind, change it, and go make it go west instead of east. And so it, the wind started to move about this far at a time. And I was walking like this around the fire. I was going around. It's like God. I was walking with God. It seemed like. I mean, it. it and you know, I, I had tears in my eyes. I, I said, Lord, who am I that you would come so quick and 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 do this for me? I said, well, it was like, well, you didn't give me much time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I thought. So I did. And eventually, I kept walking, and it was going straight west. I I got I I didn't know what to do. I I had tears in my eyes, and I said, I can't wait to get over and tell my brother what had happened. He lived just across the field from me, and I tell you, folks, uh, if you don't believe in God, you know, I mean. I have always believed in God, and, and, and I would call on him, but never 
has it ever happened to be this so quick when he would come. But I am so thankful that I know God enough that he came right, he came right there. And, and this wind was moving this far at a time. And I know, I know. And some people would say, you know, I would tell somebody this and they say, ah, oh, it's a coincidence, you know. This was no coincidence, folks. It was, it was God Almighty that came when I, when I was in trouble. He came right, right then. And, oh, I tell you, I am so blessed just to know the Savior of, of, of the whole world. I am so blessed, folks, and I, I, I was, I couldn't wait to get over and tell my brother what happened. I was telling him and, and some other folks there, and I, 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 I was crying. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how, 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 to, how to get over it, you know, because it had happened to me. Now, I've, I've prayed to God for so many things. It's never happened yet. I have a daughter who has OCD, and I've asked God to take that away from her for, for so long. But this time, it happened right then, and God came, because I had to, ha had to have him there to stop this fire from going. And I tell you, I'm so thankful that I know God, and he's in my heart to stay, and I'll, uh, I'll testify for him as long as my, my voice will let me. Amen. I, Amen. I thank him. Thank you, folks, for just right. listening to me. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Oh, I don't think there's... Oh, did you want to say something? No. Oh, okay. Thanks, Bob. Yes. Anyone else? All right. We have in uh, the, out, uh, the uh, order of service, it says we worship God with our tithes and offerings. You know we don't actually take an offering, but there are places for you to give on either door there so please do so as God leads let's sing some songs together number two number two in the, in the hymnal mm -hmm. let's see just a second before we start out. how many verses does it have we're going to skip a couple verses so we're going to sing verses one three and four one three and four Number 190, 187, 187, my Jesus, I love thee. Let's sing um, verses 1 and 4 of 187. My Jesus, I Jesus, Jesus. 
Thank you for that good singing. We have special requests that have been mentioned in the bulletin. Are there any others that you would like to mention this morning or as an update on others? Dan? I wanted to say that uh, Reverend Jerry Gino, who we had on our request prayer list, mm -hmm. he ended up having his foot, his left foot amputated from the uh, uh, diabetic ulcers and they got infected and they ended up taking his left foot off. So let's keep our prayers that he can adjust to his new life with one new foot. All right. That's Jerry G, G E H O, right? G E H O? He's a Baptist pastor in Tennessee. Okay, let's pray for him. Anyone else? Pray for the people in North Carolina. Oh, and all over who are, yeah, who are affected. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Those affected by Hurricane Helene. Anyone else? Let's pray together, can we? Father in heaven, we come before you in Jesus' name, and we recognize the great privilege we have of being your children. Thank you that you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. And today, Lord God, we would bring before you once again to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that, God, you would, you would cause there to be um, a succession of uh, things going on there, Lord, and I pray that your will would be done in the Middle East. We pray, Lord God, for our own country. As we think about, uh, we're very soon going to be electing a new president. We pray that not only in our national elections, but in our local elections, statewide elections, that righteousness and godliness and truth would be exalted and that we would see uh, that win out and that you would bring to our country again men and women who lead our country according to your will. And may we, Lord, as a country, turn back to God in, in repentance and reformation. We pray for our president today, for the Supreme Court, for the Congress. We pray for our state and local leaders. We pray specifically, God, for our missionaries, the Caleros. We're thankful that, uh, for them, and we pray for them even as they're in transition, uh, waiting on Carlos being able to come to the United States. We pray, for Lord, Lord, for those who have been affected by this hurricane. So many lives uh, just changed and, and, uh, and in need. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would, by your grace, minister to many lives. We pray that there may be many who reach out with the love of Jesus to help those who have been affected. For these prayer requests that we have mentioned, Lord, for the Cotareros who uh, lost uh, their home, at least in their flooding, uh, for Chase Panish, who is uh, Emma's friend and his parents' house getting flooded, and others, Lord, even in our own community. Pray for Chuck today. Thank you for him as he continues to deal with heart issues. We pray for Rich and Ginny Paul. We pray for Andy Thomas, God, who has had this regression of his Down syndrome. We pray you'd minister to him and to his family. Thank you that Judy is here today. <coughs> Continue to bless her as she recovers from that fractured ankle. For Jean and Bob Wilkin, for their care in declining years, we pray you're helping, especially the loopers, as they deal with that. For Beth's mother, as she recovers from her head injury. For Sharon, Lord, who is still seeking to recover her online identity. Bless her in that. We pray for uh, Jerry Jehu today, Lord, who lost his uh, left foot with this amputation. We pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen him and minister in his life. For the Snyders, who are going to a new place to minister, bless their transition. For Jerry Cassandra, who is dealing with dementia. For Bob Kanek today, Lord, and his own circulation issues, we pray for him. For Elaine Longjohn, who is continuing to recover from her stroke. For Solomon Miller, who is in rehab, uh, going through stroke symptoms. Lord, we pray for him. We thank you that Dan is here today and continue to give him strength and renewed vision for his eye. For Clayton Riggs, uh, who is recovering from this surgery on his prostate. For Richard Scarborough, Lord, who needs healing in his lungs and his mental cl clarity. For my brother-in-law, Woody Woodward, who is still fighting cancer, and Lisa, who walks along with him, we pray that you minister to that family. Lord, for those who may be traveling this week, we pray your ministry, ministry to them. Give them journeying mercies. And finally, Lord, we lift up the persecuted church throughout the world, that, Lord, you would cause there to be boldness and courage in the midst of all they face. Even though they, they are opposed with the gospel, I pray that the gospel may still go out with truth and clarity. 
Thank you now, Lord, for this time together. We lift up these requests and others that we may have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Stand together with me, receive the benediction, and we will sing the doxology. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, O creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 